Hello, Nathan here with Pixel Pipes, and it's been a while since we did one of these. Yeah, this is another uh, Pixel Box episode, and we have one that's uh, pretty special here. This one is actually from England. A friend of mine on Discord sent this to me, um, and normally I, at least you know, with the more recent Pixel Box episodes, I sort of relegate them just to uh, donations, but I don't really take. Uh, donations anymore really unless maybe under very special circumstances so this is actually something i purchased that uh he sent me yeah uh sometimes you get really good deals in territories where you don't live and that is certainly the case a lot of times in uh the united kingdom or europe in general and they just don't send packages to the united states so you need someone to uh, a courier or uh, a forwarder um, to send things to other countries. Um, so while this person does not have a forwarding service, he was kind enough to do so for me. So what do you say we dive in? All right. Well, this is really cool. Uh, obviously this is a win fast. Well, basically means lead tech. Let me go ahead and get this bubble wrap off real quick before I get too ahead of myself. There we go. That's better. So yeah, a lead tech um, G4 6800GT uh, box here. And uh, what do you say we take a look at what's inside? All right, first thing we have, there's definitely a few things in here. There we are. All right, so this is the card that was on the cover on the box, um, which is the uh, 6800 GT minus a cooler, obviously. Um, this one actually had a a Zalman cooler on it and um, he uh, actually went ahead and removed the cooler because uh, I've been trying to get a Leap Tech 1600 GT for a while. They come with a very heavy large copper cooler that almost never makes it to its destination intact. Um, I actually have one right here as you can see. Uh, this is one that I've tried to purchase in the past, and uh, yeah, it's really cool looking. I mean, this thing, it just, this is not the only time I've tried to purchase one, and I just think the cooler's too heavy. It just never seems to survive shipping, so by shipping it this way without the cooler, you don't have that, that weight on there uh, pressing down and, and uh, potentially shifting and damaging uh, the card in some way so hopefully this works and I can uh, put the proper cooler on there and obviously I'll need to very carefully remove these RAM sinks but I should be able to do so uh, but let's see what else is in here all right so this one is also another really cool one here and see if I can get the bubble wrap off. Uh, yeah, this is, this is uh, probably familiar if you've been following the channel. Um, this is another Cairo graphics card. Uh, as you can see up there, uh, Hercules 3D Profit 4000 XT, 64 megs. Uh, that's important to note because um, the other uh, Cairo one that I have on AGP is 32 megs and never got the 64 meg version and I wasn't sure if I would but there was one that came up for a good price again in Europe and so this is uh, one of the ones that kind of initiated this whole box deal so this was a separate listing so um, these, these are separate listings um, all kind of packaged together that I've uh, accumulated um, I don't know 
what I'm gonna do with this card as far as like video wise, if I'm gonna do anything. I kind of just want it for the collection mostly because I really love the Cairo series. I have a 64 meg version, but it's PCI. Uh, so having it on AGP, you know, you get the full performance, you get better compatibility. Obviously some of these caps uh, look like they're gonna need replacing, which is pretty typical. Um, but uh, yeah, pretty excited to have this one. And here is another one. Uh, this one's another 3D Profit Hercules card. Uh, missing the fan. Looks like I'll need to source one of those. Uh, but this is a, a GeForce 256. Uh, yet another one. Um, but this one is interesting because uh, if you notice on the back, there's no memory chips. And let me go grab another GeForce 256 for comparison here. So this is what you might consider your your standard GeForce 256. And um, it does have chips on both sides. This is uh, 32 megs. And so half the number of chips means this is only 16 megs. This is actually uh, an exceptionally rare version of the GeForce 256. Not a lot of them had uh, alternate memory configurations like this one. The standard amount was. 32 megs, but this one with only 16 megs may have some interesting performance characteristics. Uh, well, exceptionally rare. Uh, didn't mean to do that. Uh, that um, uh, could be interesting to test and find out. Again, don't know to what extent I'm going to uh, show that on video. Um, I mean, I might at some point, but uh, this is, again, another one I was mostly really curious about and wanted it for my collection. There's actually another one um, that I don't have that is, it's like a GeForce 256 SE, um, and I can't remember if it was 16 or 32 megs, but it will have half the number of chips, but on each side, so say... Four of these will be blank, and those will be occupied, and then four of these will be filled, and the others will be blank. Rare. I keep doing that. And so, by having half the number of chips on one side, you actually cut the memory interface in half. Uh, by default, it's 128-bit, but then it would be 64-bit. And with a 64-bit memory interface, um, <laughs> I mean, the GeForce 256 in its day was a very good performer but in actually using it in DirectX 7 titles and things from uh, you know say for example the year 2000 or so um, it's not an amazing performer and when you cut the memory bandwidth in half in which it was already starved from memory bandwidth in the first place uh, yeah that is one horrendously performing card so I don't have one of those 64-bit SE cards, and I don't really have an interest. But this one has the full 128-bit memory interface. It just has half the amount of memory. So, in theory, it should perform exactly the same as a standard GeForce 256, as long as the uh, frame buffer doesn't fill up anywhere past 16 megs. But that will be something to find out when I test it. And then last and certainly least is this one. All right, so this is a, a GeForce 4 MX420, very conveniently printed right on the PCB there. Uh, so the GeForce 4 MX series, a little bit infamous for uh, not supporting any programmable shading, no DirectX 8 support, despite the larger GeForce 4 brothers doing so. So uh, that created some market confusion. Uh, nonetheless, they sold really well, because they were very cheap, and very widely available and this one would have been more or less at the bottom of the stack GeForce 4 MX 420 the 440 would have been a more popular model and the 460 uh, which was not popular 
was not common, it's actually a little bit, uh, not rare, but it, it is uncommon. It was like $200 or close to it. Uh, way too much money for a, <laughs> a DirectX 7 graphics card of any type back in 2002 when it came out. So the MX420 generally came equipped with SDR single data rate memory, the you know, MX440 and MX460 which had DDR memory. This had half the memory bandwidth, but I just needed one of these to complete the the family, so to say. Um, and you know, there's no good way to emulate the performance of this card having SDR memory uh, with you know one of the faster versions. So I didn't need this if I ever wanted to showcase the MX420 in a future uh, video. So there we go. There is the whole collection. Uh, that we got from England uh, So yeah, pretty excited about that really excited to have this hopefully working this uh, 6600 GT I'll replace the cooler on it give it a test and really cool to have the box for it as well and a rare variant of the GeForce 256 and a missing variant uh, in my collection of the uh, original Cairo so not something I do uh, very often. Sorry about the noise in the background. Someone's doing yard work naturally uh, when <laughs> I'm recording a video. Uh, so yeah, uh, what do you say we move on to the next package? Alright, so this next package comes from Michael uh, from F2F Tech. Uh, so uh, Mike is actually uh, somebody I've gotten to know uh, over the last few years. Uh, really cool guy. He actually, if you don't know, he quit his YouTube channel um, because he got a job at NVIDIA. Um, and he posted a video about all that on his channel. Um, and... I, you know, he, he had a, a, a video card that he never got to make a video on. And, you know, I, I said, well, you know, if you let me borrow it, I can make a video on it. So he said, yeah, sure. That sounds like a good idea. So, um, he agreed to send it to me and I kind of joked. I said, well, you know, since you work for NVIDIA, uh, you should totally send me swag, you know, but much to my surprise, he, he actually uh, took me seriously and uh, I said yes and agreed to send me uh, some like random stuff uh, from NVIDIA. So that's what this is um, because the video card that he's going to send me needs some professional uh, repair work done. So uh, we're still waiting on that. So he assures me there are no GPUs in this box. It's just pure NVIDIA swag. So obviously that means I'm officially an NVIDIA shill now. No, 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 it's okay. It's okay. I still love you. But anyway, what do you say we dive right in? All right. Ooh. So this is, uh, looks like a bag. So I guess, yeah, everything is in here. This is like a tote bag. Oh, that's cool. So let's see what's inside here. We have, ooh, so we got some NVIDIA stickers. Or, you know, decals if you live in Canada. Uh, I do not actually own any modern NVIDIA products, but this is still really cool to have, especially these logos here. Uh, the classic, not classic, but you know, just the plain NVIDIA logos. Uh, and socks. <laughs> NVIDIA socks. Uh, that is excellent. I would totally wear these around the house. Let's see what else we got. We got a drawstring bag with the NVIDIA logo. Looks like we have some. Oh, awesome. Okay. 
dude. All right, so this is a nice surprise. Uh, I forgot about these because he said that he had some old Ninja Turtle comics, uh, comics that he wanted to send me. And that is awesome. Look at that. So yeah, if you know, you can't tell, um, a little bit of a Ninja Turtles fan. I mean, I'm not sure if that was ever obvious. Uh, and, but surprisingly, I don't have very many comics. Um, dude, some of the old Archie comics. So, uh, that is sweet. Look at that. That is amazing. I didn't know it was going to be so many. These Archie comics, too, are, are really neat. Sorry, I'm just, <laughs> I'm just going to be, uh, I'm just look, taking this all in. So I apologize for being quiet, but that is dude. All right. Yeah, that's, that's the coolest thing in here by far. Super happy, uh, to have these cause uh, I'm going to be looking through those in my own time. Uh, but for now, let's continue. I think there should be a couple more things in here. Alright, so this is... Oh! <laughs> this is an NVIDIA tie. Uh, that's... That's cool, and also kind of funny at the same time. I mean, who would think NVIDIA would make an embroidered tie? I don't know. It just seems humorous. And uh, let's get to that in a second. Here's an NVIDIA pen. That's cool. It's got a rubber dome tip that's probably uh, compatible with... Uh, Touch screens, let's see. Yes, it is. Just touched my phone with it. Let's see, how do I, is that twist? What? Oh. Oh, that is sweet. Okay. That's pretty awesome. And then he did mention he was going to send me a shirt. I kind of forgot. Uh, he's sent me... Ooh, that's tasteful, actually. Let's see if I can get some of this, most of this in the frame. GeForce RTX. Very cool. Uh, wow. All right, so... That is, uh, that is a lot of NVIDIA swag, actually. I did not expect quite so much, and so he kind of blew away my expectations uh, on that, but also the vintage uh, TMNT comics from the early 90s, I believe. Uh, just amazing super cool thank you so much mike uh for for sending these my way so you know while i don't have any like modern like nvidia rtx uh hardware uh this is still very cool that he sent he didn't have to do any of this um you know considering it started as a joke and me just kidding around like hey send me some pencils and he ends up sending me like all of this uh uh it's pretty cool but mike's a really cool guy and uh I, like many people, uh, miss his channel, but, um, you know, he's really happy where he's at right now, so I uh, cannot blame him for that. So, yeah, that will just about do it for this episode of Pixel Box. Uh, certainly, it's been a while since the last one. Hopefully, uh, this won't be the last, um, but we'll see, of course. Um, as always, keep it glued to this channel. Well, hang on a second. I'm not quite ready to end the video right there. I did want to show uh, that um, my 6800 GT from Leetech, um, it does in fact work. This is the card 
um, with the cooler installed looks exactly the same as the other one I didn't bother to film this or record it. it's pretty simple really um, so it's not really anything uh, that special you just take out uh, these pinch these uh, clips on either side and with a really thin flathead screwdriver you just unscrew those and then both halves come off that's it the the heat sinks were easy to get off i just had to heat them up with a um hair dryer and give them a little twist um, and then clean off the residue uh, on a couple of them so yeah i'm really excited to have this one this is one i've wanted to have working for a long time um and it just took having to send it without the cooler attached um, and also, I did uh, get the GeForce 256 16 meg fitted with a fan. I just took it off of this um, dead Quadro SDR. So it stayed within the GeForce 256 family. I do have one of these working, but this one does not. And the fan actually fits perfectly on here. Even that really tiny uh, fan header uh, fit on there just fine uh, works great actually ran some benchmarks so I'm gonna show real quick on the screen here uh, what some of the performance differences are compared to the 32 meg version uh, for the most part uh, performance honestly wasn't that drastically different basically anytime uh, you know a game doesn't need any more than 16 megs this card is gonna perform pretty much the same although I did find out this one was underclocked a bit so in order to make up for that you just got to overclock it a little bit to what would be considered the stock specific specifications for the GeForce 256 this one's just a budget version I guess but it does overclock just fine to reference speeds uh, so there were a couple of instances where performance was improved by having more memory um, and you know at least one of those was pretty drastic uh, but yeah, I just want to give that quick update. Um, so yeah, now I'm ready to end the video. Uh, thank you so much for watching. Uh, happy holidays uh, to those out there. You know, it's been a really rough year and I hope uh, some of you have found some joy in it. And here's hoping that next year is uh, a lot better for all of us. So uh, yeah, until next time, take care. Mm -hmm.